And welcome back to Folk in Scotland. I am your handsome, debonair, experienced, ninja trained host, Derek Vindas, and I am joined with by the robust Goran Vaughan. Robust is an excellent robust. <laughs> word for Yeah, it's an excellent word, dude. Right. Bovine. Bovine. Uh huh. Bovine puts me off eating beef. I just splash myself with bovril after I get up in the morning. <laughs> I like to be followed down the road by dogs and cats and vegans. Vegans follow me because I love the smell of the meat. It's it's like the ultimate sin. Well, that's the, the that, that's the thing I find strange with. If you want to be a vegan, that's great. If you want mm-hmm. to be vegetarian, which I am, that's fine. Uh-huh. But I don't need my food to be a burger if it's made of vegetables because you're no. just making it taste like beef yeah yeah and now here's the thing I don't like beef so I still don't eat it okay because it doesn't taste nice I like a bean burger because that's a lovely. bean burger is itself it's not trying it's, to be a beef it, burger that's it I, yeah. I get, you get chicken strips you get bacon and it's all vegetable mm-hmm. I don't see the point no because I don't I don't you know particularly well, like that many years ago someone bought a, a Linda McCartney sausage hot pot mm-hmm. and had some bones in it because in the factory, a blackbird nest had fallen into the machine. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. didn't she go mad because someone started her septic tank with a dead cat? <laughs> That's how you get the sort of, all the enzymes going. Well, I, 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 I knew a guy that used to live next door to, like, a Paul McCartney's estate in the Mullock and Tyre. Right. And he was a gentleman farmer. Okay. So, Paul McCartney, so he had sheep and stuff. But because he just let them go feral... Okay. There was no animal husbandry, so the mummy sheep and the son sheep were all interbreeding with each other. So, roaming Paul McCartney's oh. estate, there's like two headed sheep and sheep with scales, <laughs> <laughs> forked tongues. Oh my get, word. They get a taste for meat. I've, uh, yeah, this is. Uh, I'm not too sure of the countryside or people like that. Because you find, mm-hmm. if you talk to someone from the country... I was going to say that could be controversial, but people on the countryside don't listen to podcasts. They, they don't have the internet. No, no. They wouldn't know no. what to do with it. So, you will find mm-hmm. that if you do something as silly mm-hmm. as make a cow sound, they will stop you mid-making the cow sound and go, I will correct you. And they <laughs> will bellow this most beautiful oh, yeah, yeah, rendition yeah. of a cow moo there you've ever heard. There is something romantic about a cow's moo. What? Do you not find it just in a I'm cold, not drawn to it, cold no. morning? You know, you see a, a mighty bullock and it's on this tussocky field and it, it bellows and the, the steam's coming off the back of it. You no, know, I think, I no, does I'm, that not I'm tickle not something person. inside if you? I, if I ran this country, I'd pave the whole place. Would you? I oh, would. It's horrendous. The most enigmatic sound in the world is geese. I love geese. A skein of geese. Yes. Mm-hmm. Greylag, Canada. Uh huh. <laughs> Although when I was in Barnacle, uh, Barnacle, when I was in uh, America, they uh, called them Canadian geese, and uh, I went, "They're not. They don't have a passport. They're okay. Canada geese." Uh, ah, right. And this okay. was quite a, an okay. argument. Oh my god! You know, watch what you're saying. But country. See, here's the thing. I I never really understood the class system because no. when you're working class, you're not exposed to it in that sense. No. So you don't really understand it. Until you meet middle class people who then remind you, or upper mm-hmm. class people who mm-hmm. don't care. Okay. But I found the best way that I understood the difference mm-hmm. is when a country girl meets a city girl. Okay. A country girl could be brought up in the country and mm-hmm. come and live in the city mm-hmm. for 50 years. And after 50 years, she'll still talk about getting up early for uh-huh. the farm, mm-hmm. for the milk, for the coos, the coos. and everything like that. Mm-hmm. They never get over it. No. And there's a sense of superiority, but also a sense of isolation with them. And it's very sad. Their heart is lonely. Okay. If you're a country girl, there's a part of you that's always lonely, always lost. Where if you're a city girl, you're just, how can I put it, open to everyone. You're open to, you've been mainlining coke. <laughs> Just since the day you were born. Yeah. Because there's cocaine in the water supply in cities. Well, this is true. There's the pill. Yeah. Is it is estrogen and cocaine. Up at Minas Hill. Mm-hmm. All the pipes are still asbestos. Is it? Yeah. Minas Hill. My dad Next was one. once uh, once uh, washing his Triumph Dolomite and a skein of geese flew over. And one of them shot. And it hit the bonnet. Mm-hmm. And there was an egg in it. Oh, is that how it works? 
I, I, would, I would have thought a goose would have had to have sat and think about it. <laughs> no, it shot an egg from height. That egg had hit like terminal velocity. It was a kind of beige coloured triangle oh, dolomite and right. it chipped the paint. Oh you just couldn't get the paint anymore. Oh dear. Triumph Dolomite. It sounds a bit like no, that you I can grew, maybe get some emulsion. I grew up <laughs> I grew up in a small dish town. So one foot was in the country. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of know what you're talking about. There is a sadness out there. There is. There's, There's a, nice a lot thing. of suicide amongst farmers. Uh-huh. And they can't meet other farmers. Because mm-hmm. it's it's a life. You've got to be born into it, I think. Yes, that, th- he, there is. Yeah, yeah but and the that's smell of silage. Because I've met yeah. country girls. And they yeah. can never acclimatise no. to any other life. They've got right red cheeks. Yes. Big strong thighs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're a very odd bunch. Yeah. They're a very odd They're bunch. like a bit of knitwear. Oh, they love I, their I, I kind like of, an artist girl, blue yeah, hair and knitwear. Blue hair and knitwear. But the, my hometown, they, they, they spoke about the young farmers as dungers. Mm-hmm. And I kind of say they were an overly nice bunch a lot of the time. Mm. They drank grouse whiskey, mm-hmm. which isn't a good whiskey, man. Grouse Is whiskey. It not? I'm not an expert. But they, they had big hammy forearms. Freckly, oh, right. freckled yeah. forearms. There's a lot of freckles, that's another thing. A lot of piggy noses, snub yeah. noses. They look great mm-hmm. until what? they're about 18. Oh, and I, then is this all farmers? Or? All farmers. Okay. Then life hits them. You notice farmers, they've got very thick necks. I think oh, it's a genetic yeah. thing. They're it's, very it's a tractor. bloated. It's a tractor. Yeah. Yeah. Pulling horses Dangerous. or whatever they do. Do they pull? I don't <laughs> know. I've never <laughs> been in a farm. I've, I've, I've taken part in the lambing. Oh. Once or twice, it's, Jesus. It's a lot of fluids. Oh. But there's a lot of monsters. Because mm. Chernobyl just irradiated Scotland. Yeah, it's true. So there was things with gills. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit fixated on mutant sheep today. I don't it's, know what it is. You know. Funnily enough, I'm going home for some lamb chops. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if an eye just... A, <laughs> just I once said a bit of corned beef that had an eyelid in it. You know what? My favourite pies in Dundee when they used to be mainly oh. made of testicles and eyelids. Oh. Remember, it was that grey yeah, meat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'd go back to eating meat if you could still get Just that. Just rusk. Oh, it was amazing. You got the chewy bits. It was white, almost transparent oh. gristle. The tendon. Oh. oh, I loved that. Potted heed. What? Potted heed. Have you had potted heed? And no, they call no. it, well, potted hock now. Oh, hock. No, that's disgusting. Oh, I oh. love it. You heat it up slightly, so it just mm. slightly softens the jelly. No, it just no, goes no. down like a prairie oyster. Delicious. My mother eats that. When she gets back from her tantric sex class. <laughs> With sting. <laughs> She's 93, and uh-huh. she runs this class for young couple. Anyway. How's your mother's pelvic floor? <laughs> I don't get involved. And she heats up some hock. Uh-huh. That's, that's very yin and yang, isn't it? It's Yoga, then hawk. <laughs> <laughs> and if no one's, uh, uh, anyone who's listening, rather, and they don't understand what hawk is, go online and you'll find, a, a, it's a plastic, what's the pot? Not an ash it, what's the little pot yeah, called? Yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like a beef yogurt. It's a beef, beef yogurt. yogurt, yeah. <laughs> it's like a beef yogurt. <laughs> It's like a meaty. That's exactly it's like what a. It is. It's like a meaty melange. Yeah. Is it a melange? You'll. I, I'm going to go with that. But what you'll hear about Scotland is things like haggis. They're awful. In no, they're actually not. It's just spicy. It's lovely. They're really good. They're well-made mm. foods. But there are foods that do exist, and hoch is one of them. What's the one that's made of fish? Cod roe. I love cod roe. Mm. Oh. Cod, cod roe is the the egg sac of a cod, and oh, it man. looks no. It's veined. <sighs> Even talking it's about veined. it. It's veined. Yeah. And you buy it from the butcher, the butcher, the fishmonger, and it's been boiled. So it looks like a testicle. That's exactly and it. I can't you, even look at it. When you put a knife to it, mm-hmm. the skin, no, it would be a membrane. Mm-hmm. The membrane splits and the, the inner edge it just, comes out. It spills. But you cut it into slices and fry it. It's, it's delicious. It's deli- it's I would eat it boiled. It. I grew up eating a lot of sweetbreads, which mm. is just the glands. Oh. Glands. Oh, just and it's <laughs> like a. <laughs> this is why I eat vegetables now. Being in Scotland, it's a survival tactic to go vegetarian. The, the only time an Inuit would eat vegetables mm-hmm. is when they eat the 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 inside of a reindeer's stomach. Cause no vegetables. That's true. So yeah, no vegetables. I love vegetables, but I like I like the unfashionable. Well, no, seeing that unfashionable vegetables have become fashionable. The like, Brussels sprout. Oh, the, w- the cabbage. The other day I was at a, a, 
a fair, uh-huh. and they were carrying armfuls of Brussels sprouts, yeah. but like on a full stock. Now I didn't know they grew on oh, solid yeah, trees. Oh yeah, they grew. Yeah, they're in the stock. There you yeah. go. I was completely. But unaware. they've changed the flavour of them. The Brussels sprout used to be. Bitter. Oh, the prawn it's cocktail not, now. now. I love prawn cocktail. If they were prawn cocktail, I would eat them. I love prawn cocktail. It's so good. Not the real prawn cocktail. I'm thinking crisps. Because that's tomato. What prawn cocktail crisps are flavoured with tomato. It's, it's tomato you taste <laughs> My mind has been blown. <laughs> salt and vinegar, this is going to be wild. Salt and vinegar crisps are actually flavoured with cheese. And cheese flavoured crisps <laughs> are flavoured with salt and vinegar. No, listen. We've been I'm, lied to all our lives. I'm what, you here, think, what you think is cheese is not cheese. I'm it's almost never believing been you. And this is happening again. Cheese. Beef flavoured crisp. It's chicken. And chicken flavoured crisp. It, it's an upside that we're living within the matrix. This oh. is glitches. Well, I was in the States and, uh-huh. I, and I got a steak bought for me. And when I bit into it, it was like beef crisps. It wasn't like beef. Fizzy. They'd have a fizzy it taste. Was, it was horrible. It just tasted like beef crisps. Cheap, off-brand is, is it crisps. A, is it something they've sprinkled on yeah, it? Yeah. A they're, flavour they're of so, beef. They're all genetically modified, so it's got no flavour. Right. So they feed them the flavour so it goes into them. And it's beef flavouring. Have you seen the, the slurry lakes? In yes. America? Yeah, they're huge. You see them from space. Because they feed cows corn, and cows can't eat corn, they eat grass. So they can't really digest it properly. And then this corn effluent mm-hmm. is very toxic. And there's nothing you, you can't use it as fertiliser. It just sits in these pools, these, lo- excuse me, a lagoon. A lagoon. It'd be easy to swim in, though. Oh god, you'd viscous. Be, you'd be like Exxon Valdez <laughs> Seagull, just smeared, just out. smeared and shite. The, the sadness, <laughs> smeared and shite. Oh god, but I was. Uh, that's something else. I always, uh, it doesn't annoy me. Mm-hmm. I'm just aware. And nothing does. Nothing does. I'm very nothing easy does. going. Dead inside. D- completely numb. But the value of something size is only. Uh huh. Judged by if you can see it from space. Yeah, the Great Wall of China. Can't see it from space. You can't? No, nope. it, it goes with the contours. Ah. You know? That's all that's, I knew. That's because you I can said see I was, edu- I was educated by television, as we've spoken about before. Apparently, sure. it's easy to see a road if it's straight because it just stands out. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's very odd. Is there straight lines in nature? Is there corners uh, in nature? Yes, when you go along uh, the coast down at uh, south of St Andrews, they've got all those sort of volcanic hexagon yeah. rocks. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's not right angle, but you do have these really unusual shapes and everything. Yeah, you know. In Creole, oh, now we're talking. There's a fossilized beach, mm. and it has the footprints of a giant centipede. There's a scorpion down there as well. Oh, a twelve foot scorpion. Twelve foot sea scorpion. It's massive. It's fossilized tree. Oh. That's Isn't great. it marvellous? It's all fake, of course. Yeah, it's because just I'm a, I'm, I'm, I can't mean I. I believe that the world's six thousand years old. I don't. <laughs> think it, I don't even think it's six thousand years. I think the world blinked into being when I was born. Oh, because I was fully sentient just before I was born. I oh. remember the experience. Okay, tightness, then a lightness, then a streaming light. And then everything just came into being. You know, I, I have am. No I, doubt. Am, I completely believe. I am this. God. Well, if that's the case, uh-huh. when I lived in the States... Prove otherwise. Oh, I could. You're just a creature of my imagination. You don't exist. You think you do, but you don't. Ah, Nothing but here's the, here's the difference. Oh, God, here we go. Do you know that I don't exist in your reality of mine? <sighs> God, this is very, phil- this is very philosophical. <laughs> I think. I was in the I, States. Uh huh. And I was living with uh, some people who mm-hmm. were of a religion that I won't mention Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. And... Do they call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses? They... I don't know what they refer to themselves as. Because Mormon, Mormons don't call themselves Mormons. Right, okay. But Jehovah's Witnesses call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. I believe they did, yeah. Okay. And the person I was living with was disfellowshipped because she had an affair. So her own mother wasn't allowed to be seen with her or talk. So her mother took us out for lunch. Mm-hmm. And she sat on one side of the restaurant and we sat on the other. And then we had to leave at different times to go to the car. Okay. And then I was talking about 
one of the greatest roles ever played by any man in history in a, oh, yeah. in a movie, and that was Patrick Swayze in Ghost. Oh. And I said the word ghost, and oh, it's shh. That's a good film. Thumb, if you say ghost. the word ghost, a ghost might be passing, and mm-hmm. you come into the house thinking it was invited. I went, is that its name? Jeez. You know? I was at school with a guy who wasn't allowed to watch Count Duckula, mm. because it was satanic. I like. I prefer Roadhouse. Oh, Roadhouse is absolutely incredible. He does yoga like your mother does. Yes, I bet he's got. He had a wonderful pelvic floor. Oh God, it would be made of steel. You could land a plane in, in his blue. pelvic floor. Bouncing <laughs> <laughs> cannonballs off it. I, I, I'm going to put this out here. My favourite film mm-hmm. is Dirty Dancing. Okay, carry on. I don't think I have to. There's a bit is this he, because you had a 45 year old man being involved with a 15 year old no girl. no I just like I just like the time period I think it captures things well he, he's he's a dancer he, he he dances in a masculine fashion he makes dancing look good and I love the bit where he doesn't have the car keys so he smashes the window of his car mm-hmm Truculent. He's a truculent individual. I like him. He's dangerous. That, see, that's leathered, the problem. That's jacket. the problem. Dangerous for ladies like you is always good from a distance because yeah. you'll change him. Oh, I, you, I, he won't be like that to me. No, I, I, I wouldn't change him for a moment. I got my keys stuck in my van once. You know what I'd done? What did you I do? went and borrowed a screwdriver and I gently removed the rubber seal from the window, you're, took you're it like, out. You're like Patrick Swayze after I'd got my hands in them and changed them. I'm like him after I've, round I've, six of the I've, game. <laughs> I've, I've neutered, I've neutered you. You're no dancing anymore. Are you going out to dance tonight, Patrick? No, I'm just going to stay in and make you a mint tea. <laughs> God, Patrick Swayze. Jeez. What, he was a Ghost. proper man. Have you ever tried to move something with the power of your mind? Yes, I went through a phase where I believed all that nonsense and I even bought a book... And it was a, a Harry Geller book, uh-huh. and you got free crystals with it. I got out of the works for five ninety nine. Yuri, Ge- he's a f- Yuri Geller. He's, he's a, a crook, isn't he's he? Just he's just a fake nonsense. Yeah, just a f- nonsense of a character. I remember one time. I was allegedly, crazy. this is public. Allegedly, allegedly. Is a I wouldn't call him a crook, but many people have. You could say, yeah, aye, yeah, yeah. He worked didn't. for Mossad. He claimed, he claimed this, and he claimed that. Do you know where he got he's his powers? From a spaceship. It was a spaceship. That was a spaceship. He saw a spaceship. Came down, gave I'm him his actually, powers. I'm, I'm writing a novel at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a, no, a novella. A novella. And it's Because a novel's too hard. Like, too much. Too much. <laughs> and what it's, it's about a man who come, who's coming back from the pub on a Saturday mm-hmm. night. He right. gets cut, sh- cut short. Mm-hmm. But he's on the phone to his wife. And he's on the phone while he's doing a, a large liquidy... Yes, shite. of course. He gets struck struck by lightning. Okay, and it gives him a power where, when he's watching people on the TV, Uh-oh. he can make them shit themselves. Oh, so he 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 then starts to just take down society. He makes a president of the United States shite himself, and he just he, he changes the world just with this magic power. And are you this been, by hand or typing? There's been some interest. <laughs> it's handwritten. <laughs> On pieces of toilet roll and, and crayon. Tiny writing. Tiny writing. When I, when I write, it's just one word repeated. Spider like writing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spider like. Like the book on seven when they're, they're going <laughs> through. <laughs> Aye. Yeah. I think they always say there's a novel inside everyone. Well, if you yeah. force it hard yeah. enough. A, do you know what a Chatham pocket is? I don't. It's 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 Uranus. Oh. <laughs> and a ch- Oh. No, not just oh specifically you, Uranus, okay. all Uranus. If you need to smuggle someone out of prison, what yeah. you use is the little container from a, a Kinder's Egg. Now, you say little, I've had a Kinder's Egg, and that's a fair That's a fair. When you chunk. say had a Kinder's Egg, <laughs> no, you eat the chocolate first. <laughs> oh, I thought it was just a swallow. No. And you, oh. you, 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 you get a tiny mobile phone that fits inside one of those containers. That's the worst thing about suppositories, trying to swallow I've them. I've never used a suppository. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get an iPhone in one of them. Uh, so Ow. Yuri Geller was given his powers by a UFO. Yeah, yeah. I've never but seen now a UFO. He's, he's referring to himself as an entertainer. Well, that's what there they was do. Some legal, yeah, issues. yeah, 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 yeah. Because he was claiming he was finding oil around the world for companies, and that, and I think some company. He went, was best mates with Michael Jackson as well, wasn't he? Well, that's not really a, one, a no, qualification for no, anything, is no, it? No, that'd been a thriller. The 
Michael Jackson. He was in. Yuri Geller, Yuri Geller was in. Uh, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Was and he? he said, and he was. He went off on his own, and it was Michael Jackson's birthday. And he went, oh, it's Michael Jackson's birthday. I can feel it. I can sense it. I can sense his happiness, his joy at getting older. Uh, and he was talking, but he forgot about the time difference. <laughs> and he got the wrong day. <laughs> We were speaking about chimps quite recently. Is Bubble still alive? Mm-hmm. Is he? Yeah. Has a terrible smoking habit and lives in a... <laughs> Is he? Yeah. Do you know what's still alive? The orangutan from every which way but loose. Clyde. Clyde. <laughs> He's still with us. That's amazing. They really And I believe on, Lassie's still with us as well. And Flipper. Oh my word. These animals, once they get the fame, they just live forever. They love it. Some, they must inject them with something. A lot, of this, a lot of smoking going on. They like to smoke. You see Clyde, I think he was, uh, he liked a whiskey and would a you, cigar. You wouldn't have take a cigarette off a chimp, would you? I, you know, they probably know I could hold this someplace, you know. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, even a monkey, I think, a small monkey, I wouldn't have liked there to There used to be with. squirrel monkeys up at Camperdown Zoo. Was there? In the 70s and 80s, I mean, mm. you walked past them, because you're allowed to smoke. They would grab the cigarette out your hand and smoke it. Okay. And that's how they were all had a terrible habit there, and they all had to get uh, nicotine patches. <laughs> Do you have to shave a little bit of a monkey to put the patch on? They had to have a little square shaved off them regularly That's to put this job. nicotine patch. <laughs> and then it was taken off. Uh, uh, there was a week in a zoo across in Fife. I was across that a few years ago. I think it closed. A zoo in Fife? A zoo in Fife. Because I think like the meerkats were breeding with the monkeys and the rabbits. It was just, <laughs> everything was just really... Just monsters. <laughs> just, just end it. Rapture kind of style why, creatures. Why was it closed? It was against Things God. Things with wings were taken off. <laughs> But I was there was a little spider monkey thing. Um, no, a marmoset. And I was trying to have a little conversation with the marmoset. Mm-hmm. And this old zookeeper came up to me and says, "Watch yourself, laddie." I says, "What's the matter?" He said, "That little marmoset is a complete bastard." That's all he said. <laughs> <laughs> but the marmoset was being all adorable, right? And that was just to lure me in. Oh my I've god! What had it in its mind? You've got to be careful out there. In Dundee, Camperdown Zoo used uh-huh. to go up. Do you remember? You'd go down, and there was the foxes, there was the uh-huh. all the different things, but you never ever saw them. But you would smell them. They're very oh, pungent. The musk. There was never any animals in it. They used to take the shit from the other animals and put it in and make it stink. So people went there in oh. there. They had no animals. I, I they had like four I, rabbits I, in the whole place. Just, 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 just. Oh, what? There was a, I knew a guy, I was doing like an art project up in Carmen Down Zoo, and one of the guys there, he worked, I think, quite exclusively with the wolves. Mm-hmm. A bit of a shame having a wolf in a cage. Yes, it's got the whole course. tundra, thousands yeah. of miles to trot them. So he'd think he'd hand-reared these things, but he's, he'd, he had a promotion, so he was no longer working with the wolves. Mm-hmm. But there was a sickness one day, one of the keepers was off, so he had to go and look after them. Right. And he, he, just, he would go into the cage with them, because they knew him. Mm-hmm. But he went in. And he had a really funny feeling. He looked round, and the wolves had got behind him, between him and the exit. Oh, oh. And they were coming in to do the old uh, nip yeah. at the back of the, the, the cankles to eat him. Yeah. And he, he started, like, smacking plates about it, made a noise and go out. But he said, yeah, they'd, they'd kind of forgotten him, and he was lunch. They would eat him. Because oh. I suppose a tame animal's more dangerous. I would say so. You know what because I mean? Because you put yourself in a bad position thinking... It's like when the the guys, they say, oh, I brought up this lion, let's go oh. and play with it. You just see in their eyes, just because I ate, I'm not killing you. That's yeah. the only reason. Yeah, just, that's the only just, reason. Just because my, f- yeah, a ligon. A tig- yeah, uh, tigon or a uh, liger? A liger. They're giant. They're like 15 foot. <laughs> Huge things. But they're mules. They can't, yeah, they, they, can't, they can't, yeah. can't breed. I think that's F1. I think that's generation one. They can't Is go it? beyond that, I think it's called. That's it. Mm. Private zoos. Strange. Yeah. You'll see, you know what you'll see around here? I saw one years ago, um, and they're they're called Chouseys, I think. Chouseys? And they're a domestic cat and a jungle cat bred together, and you only get F1. That's what reminded me. Mm-hmm. But they are gigantic. They're oh these my. huge cats, and they look like pumas. And you'll see them running around here, because people uh, import them. Mm-hmm. But that's what they are. 
Because you, you get them, they're just a wee kitten. You don't mm-hmm. think anything of it. These things grow up to be beasts. They're incredible, but they're nippy. Like they're... I, 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 I'm, I don't particularly kind of cryptozoology, like uh, Loch Ness Monster and stuff, but I, I swear to God, my mother and I saw a big cat many years ago. Yes, you right, get big cats. Right, there is a theory that people had like private zoos and then the Dangerous Animal Act, That's and exactly they just let them is. out. Yeah. The last tiger mm-hmm. was sold in Harrods in 1987. It would be dead by now. So beds may be bred with a domestic cat. A hundred percent. The and they can, they can breed. A lot of people think well they're just cats and they can breed. Mm-hmm. And but the the Chelsea, look that up. Mm-hmm. They're huge. A huge. They thing. cost a fortune. I love cats. But apparently they destroy everything. They'll destroy your house. They're just okay. They're not friendly at I all. I had pet rats. Uh huh. And I had ten of them. At one stage, in a big, huge enclosure thing in my house. And I was renting a flat at the time, and I wasn't allowed pets. Mm-hmm. So when there was a house inspection, I used to conceal it with it, throwing a curtain over the cage. Mm-hmm. The guy wasn't the smartest, he never noticed. But one of them escaped, and it was living a separate life. Mm-hmm. And it had stored so much food under the floorboards, it just had no reason to come back. All right. And one time I was eating a bacon and egg sandwich and I went and bite into it and the bacon was gone and I looked and the rat was running across the floor <laughs> with a bit of bacon. Speaking They're very, of, very intelligent. It's terrifying. Speaking of animals, mm-hmm. you do breed an animal at the moment. How is that going? The cockroach. Yes. <clears throat> it's an ongoing project. And how your one cockroach is now how many? I think there's a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I fed them some lettuce this morning. Oh dear! They're, they're Was it just instantly demolished. Just like? demolished. I'm, if I accidentally killed someone, I mm-hmm. could I could get rid of them. Oh, you could. I think they gnaw you right down to the bone. But you have a lot of uh, cockroaches <clears throat> at that point. Yeah, you know they, they're quite, they, they they give birth to live young. Their, their abdomen splits asunder and just hell. The portals of hell open. Oh. But they're the size of a mouse, like oh a small my. mouse. That's oh, a big well, cockroach. I could show people. I like to put one in my mouth sometimes, oh, right. dinner parties. Yeah, funerals. Funerals, things like that. The taste of ginger. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. It reminds me of a time I thought I was. Oh. I'm, I'm, I, I like to pretend sometimes I, I tell people I can go into any strata of society mm-hmm. and behave impeccably. So I was across in the Holland and I was invited to this kind of swanky art thing, an art gallery. Okay. And I thought, so I was on my on my best behaviour. I went for a, a shite in one of their nice <laughs> toilets because it just it just unclutters. Do you not find? Of course, it clears the mind. Because if you need a piss, it, it, you're edgy, but it just yes. sooth, it's soothing. Mm. So I'm walking about, I'm mingling with Amsterdam's elite, right? All the arty kind of people, and there's there's there's, there's food on on show, okay. and there's a bowl of what I thought were capers, and I like a caper. Yeah, grabbed a big handful, threw them into my mouth, and they were discarded olive pips. Oh, did you enjoy them? <laughs> but normally I would have spat them out because I was in the, if I'd been with you, yeah, and moving in your car, I'd have just spat them in your face. But because I was a sophisticated lot, I spat them in the top pocket of my shirt. Oh, discreetly, a, discreetly. I can't be taken anywhere. No, because can you use a knife and fork? No, no. I use chopsticks. Okay, <laughs> and I do. I only use chopsticks. I started this. I met a German couple uh-huh. who were touring Scotland. Right. Okay. And I was at the beach, and I was eating my my super noodles and beans with okay. a fork, and uh-huh. I went stop. Stainless steel is an act of metal. Uh-huh. It changes the flavour of everything. Right. Take a pair of these chopsticks. I still have them to this day. Uh-huh. Bamboo would, ones. Yeah. Okay. And I was because they've got a nice t- texture for picking things up. So I struggled with it. And I thought, right, I'll keep going, that's different. Done it for a month and went, oh, right, I'll go back to my fork. I put the fork in my mouth. It burns you. That You can taste the stainless steel. It's overwhelming. So I went, no, and I've always been chopsticks. So now I'm actually going out for a dinner tomorrow and I'm really nervous about it. But what I've figured out, I wait till someone starts eating and I copy what they do. Right, okay. I don't know how, I can't remember which hand the fork goes into. no. You know the difference between a knife, forks. You've got the basics. I know the difference between what they look like. Bring a spork. Oh, a spork's great. If I want to cut my mouth to pieces, they're ideal. A spork. Yeah, I, I've been trying to find a mini spork from my pocket. 
I think you do get them in black. So if you go nah, and they're not many enough they're for not, me. Not There's a mini enough. sport. I've noticed in America they seem to have a lot of nice gear like that. Yeah. Britain's lacking in cutlery. I had a, a, a fake Swiss Army knife uh-huh. in the eighties. Mm-hmm. A Swiss Swiss Army. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I we went camping. Oh. And I went on about this knife. Check my knife. It's so cool. My knife's perfect. And I had a spoon on it. I oh. used a spoon yet, right? How's a spoon? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, no, I'm it folded I'm, yeah, it. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's beautiful. And I went, everyone seen my knife, you seen my knife, my knife's so great. And I sit down my Dixie can, my military oh. mess can, and it's my like suit stand was by in, me. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sitting and I pulled out the spoon. Because it was so cheap, it was completely flat. Okay. <laughs> but I couldn't admit this. No, no. <laughs> so I had to what could adhere to the, the, the metal? Right. That's what I had a tomato soup. Oh. It was cold by my fifth oh. attempt to get something, but I wouldn't a admit flat, failure. A flat. Completely flat. Flat. I had a, when Rambo was big in the 80s, I had a Rambo knife. Oh, yeah, we all had Serrated them. blade, yep, and yep. I had a, had a, a thingy-majig in the handle, the hilt. A compass. A compass and a fishing kit. And I had a hollow... Yeah, yeah, because you could just you could take them to school. Oh yeah, there was no problem back then. We used to you, carry them around. You could just put them into your belt, go yeah. about. Nowadays, you'd be you, you, there'd be red dots all over. Having it, having yeah. even the th- the two or five year old child, the two or five year old child. You know, like, yeah, pocket knife's illegal now. You just can't have anything. But I worry about when a kid gets a hold of a knife now. They won't know how. They would just well, handle they, it carefully. They would open it and then stab themselves in the eye. Yes, because they'd be trying to look at it. That's why we can't have guns here now because we're so being, we're far away from guns. And if they were just guns back in, half of the population would be dead by shooting themselves, oh, yeah. and the other half would be dead over fights over parking spaces. Like, yeah, they get a bad sugar next. Yeah, and, yeah. But it's going to become illegal. There's going to be guys in street corners with dirty marks on. Little sachets of sugar in their pockets. That's like, do you remember they banned smokies for a while because of the way they were made? They are both smoky. Yeah, Did it they? was done for a while. Mm. And then they banned the pies that I liked, mm-hmm. the testicles mm-hmm. and eyelids. Right, one. okay. And we used to go up to this place in our broth on the way to the beach and you'd oh. say, uh, Can I have a, a hot bean pie, please? And the guy says, Do you want a hot bean pie or a hot bean pie? Okay. And I'd go, A hot bean pie with a little wink. And out came this grey meat. Sodden and grease thing. Was this deep oh. fried kind of almost? No, no, it, it wasn't deep fried. It was just in the microwave. Oh, one minute, and out it came. It was disgusting. It was beautiful. Have you ever had a pie roll? Of course. Oh, I'm from Dundee. Yeah, it's a delicious. I thing. had a lasagna on a roll the other day. This is going to be controversial. I think Dundee pies are terrible. I agree. I'm from the northeast, and I we, completely we have, agree. We have better pies. There's a thing called a buttery. Which mm-hmm. is the greatest thing. They, sp- they were trying to rebrand them as the, the Doric Croissant. Oh, butteries. <laughs> butteries. <laughs> butteries. There's an even more obscure one called a Rowie. Oh, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. It's that's, made me like fat. That's, that's more like uh, if you ever wanted to cheat at the World Championships stone skipping oh, yeah. event, you use one of those rolls. <laughs> They'd be good. They'd be good. <laughs> they, they, you'd get one to France. <laughs> ah, pie meat. You spoke, was it the other day you spoke about a mock chop? A, a mock, mock chop. chop. Oh. Yeah. Or a chip steak. You know, I was in my 30s before I went, wait, mock, as in not real. Not real. It didn't dawn on me. What's it made of? I thought it was from the mock, the horned mock that would run around like a, fields. Like a mock turtle. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was a mock. <laughs> mock and chop. And then I realised it was just uh, hoofs, there's essentially. A, there's a picture of me as an, a, a, like an infant, like a, a, in swaddling clothes, a baby. I imagine you had a moustache at that age. I, my head was exactly the same size. The head was just on the ground, glued to the ground with a weight, and the little body just <laughs> flapped about. Just flap like an appendage. It's like the roots in an onion. It was just terrible. <laughs> but there's a picture of me <laughs> holding a white pudding that's the same size as me, and I've no teeth, and I'm gumming and this you're white, gumming pud- the white pudding, <laughs> softening it. You see that? I've had see, a white pudding in a long time. You see uh, young mums mm-hmm. in. In Lochie, you know, they're, they're pushing their kids uh-huh. along because it's the school holidays, yeah. so they're able to look after their kids. And uh, yeah, you'll often see them with a smoked sausage, and the kids just <laughs> one a of battered the, smoked sausage. The, one of the probably the first times I moved, first day or something, I moved to Dundee, I went for a walk in the town because you kind of try and find your feet. Yeah, and there was a couple pushing their baby. And I mean, it was a tiny baby. Mm-hmm. And the guy opened a can of Coca Cola yes. and p- started pouring Coca Cola down the baby's throat. Yeah, you'll see this. I've seen that quite a bit. It's it's. it's you'll have sweets like uh, 
Skittles. Now, they're oh. hard, they're choking and stuff okay, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You'll see a baby getting it pushed in their mouth. A like Skittle? Posted. Oh, that. A Skittle almost killed me. I was watching a, a, a Brachiosaurus <laughs> and I ate a Skittle and almost died. A Skittle? Yeah. I, yeah. You know what kills more Chinese, Japanese people than anything else? What? Is it not a, a mochi? Are they called a mochi? What's that? It's a little like dumpling, a little so, soya bean dumpling. Okay. Delicious. They're, they're squidgy. Right, but when you throw them and you they just there are the they just they block the airwaves. You've, oh, you've, right, they're, that's they're, it, oh yeah. yeah, they just kill. There's that. a lot of risk with the Japanese food. The blowfish, yeah, the blowfish. It seems like there's too much risk for me. Yeah, I'd, I'd there's a lot. Minimize my risk. There's a lot of pollution in raw fish. I would imagine, isn't there? Well, yeah. I mean, I I was going through a phase of eating a lot of fish. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I done a fast last oh, God, year and I didn't me. eat for a week. A week. A whole week, and oh, it was no. fine. You didn't I've, even feel anything. I've eaten every day in my entire life. A couple of days, your body stops asking for food. It's the strangest experience. No, I'm experience. not prepared to have that conversation, my Honestly. Body. <laughs> that would be an argument. And then after a week, uh-huh. I went, right, I'm going to eat. Uh-huh. And the weirdest thing, I love fish, but okay. I can't eat tuna and I can't eat salmon. No. And it says, all I need is tuna. Okay. And I went and got a can of it, and I was eating it with my fingers right Like out. an animal? Yes. And okay. I eat tuna, no problem now. Okay. And I, I can eat a lot. I wanted gherkins, can't stand them. I went and got a jar of gherkins, had them all. It's like your you body you completely changed. You'd reset your body. There's food that I could eat that I can't eat now. Mm-hmm. And there's food that I... Even the, the thought of tuna would make me sick. Oh. And now I can eat it. There's cans of tuna I, over there. I, like I eat it That's all weird. the time. Reset. There's those people that claim they can just live on light. Yes. Is it breatharians? Breath- a breatharian. Stupid S- idiots, stupid people. Slightly, see, I once got food poisoning off an oyster. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to die. I seem to have a lot of these experiences. I sat in the toilet, em- <laughs> emptying my bowels and vomiting into a tampon bin because I was in the ladies. That's I was incredible. in the ladies' toilet, um, but I never eat. I, I never ate for about a week, and then I had this craving for the egg, the yolk of an egg. Your body tells you Just what it eggs. needs. Yeah, yeah it's weird. weird. But my mum and dad were at a wedding many years ago, and they. Uh, it was one of these comedy situations. The people who had the chicken were fine. The people yeah. who had the pork. Oh, right, like on a plane. And my dad said he could see everybody starting to head to the toilet. And suddenly he felt unwell. And he almost died. Oh. And all he lived on for about a week and a half was Lucas Aid Sport. Oh, I have a story about that. Okay. Right. Got What's a sporty stone? about it, Lucas Aid Sport? I don't know. You had a kidney stone? I had a kidney stone. <sighs> Cut thought out I was or dying. Out? No, thought I was dying, right? Go up to hospital. Like a pistachio nut. And it's building, it's building, it's oh. pain, right? I've never felt pain like it. And it's... It's, it's like right child, like childbirth. Yeah, the front to the back, mm-hmm. through your ribs. I felt like I was impaled. I, you can't think. So I'm there for about six hours. Mm-hmm. And I went, I need to go to the toilet. Mm-hmm. And they went, right, go. Go straight over. And I peed and I felt it drag through me. I felt it leave. Like a piece of barbed wire. It was terrible. But then it went. Did you and see I felt, it? Nope, didn't see anything because I, I I peed it away, and because uh, it was apparently it was meant to pee in this tub thing, and so I just could have a look yeah, and it. I just peed. I just I didn't know it was there. You could have had it made into a little ring, a little oh, pinky God. ring. Apparently, it was about a millimeter, and that's a what millimeter. caused the pain, right? So people get them at five mil. I can't imagine. So they says, "Well, got your results back because they took my bloods and everything." Mm-hmm. And they said, "Now." We we'll think you've passed it, so you're not. You don't need to stay tonight. You can okay. go home. We we'll think you're going to be okay. okay. Went, right, brilliant. They said, but now here's the thing. The week before, I had that sickness and diarrhea. Mm-hmm. And I'd been living on Lucasaid. And oh. I went, oh, God. And they said, well, I've noticed something. Your glucose is awful high. And I went, oh. And I was like, I hope to God they don't check for jammy dodgers. Because yeah. I had jammy dodgers and Lucasaid the whole week. Can imagine that combination. My pee fizzed. Fizzy. Have you, after a really good night out, the yeah. following morning when you go for a pish, it smells like sugar puffs. Yes. Is that, the, that. is that the sugar in your urine? I don't know, but the sugar puffs be. is quite overwhelming. It smells quite nice. I'm not complaining I've not about it. I've not had a sugar it. puff for a long time. No, I don't they like it. They say them. if you get to drink your own pee, you don't. it's not the first or the last, midstream. All oh, right, okay. Because the, uh, the, the, yeah. the first bit, bleh, shaking, Well, I stale. heard that you're meant to drink someone else. I fell out with my um, mate's girlfriend over drinking pee. And what happened was, we are talking about in a survival situation, mm-hmm. you have to drink urine. You but have to. But you have to. The first you thing to. you do, even if you have water, go straight You'd to urine. You have to chill it, though. Well, here's the thing that I realised. <laughs> it wouldn't be the pee that 
the lack of pee or anything like that would kill me because I would drink it. Yeah. It would be a lack of a cup. Yeah. Because otherwise you'd have to hold that thing up. Straight from the straight, pump. Straight from the source. And I'm like, you know, I choose death. Yeah. So I was saying this to my mate and I went, Steve, I would drink your pee. You'd, uh, and she she didn't like this. She didn't. I think she felt, felt left out. <laughs> left out. Because <laughs> she, she would... I've, I've never drawn my own pee. No, it's not something I've been drawn to. No, I've never been in a survival situation. Kind of a balls to the wall survival situation. Yeah, I've never had that. Flight either. of the Phoenix. Come when they're drinking, yeah, you know that. Yeah, and you've got to build your own aeroplane to get out. I've never had to do that once. No, Wait, no, no, I've never done that. Mildly thirsty. <laughs> no. Can't be bothered walking home. I'll sit for a while. Yeah, I've done right. that. Could, could you eat your own feces? No, that's a very different thing. But, but the, the, I know you're going to use the excuse of gorillas, but no, I'm going to stop you. A gorilla... <laughs> Eats its own feces first thing in the morning. Elephants love it. And they'll... they're not sure if it's because it likes a nice warm meal first thing, mm-hmm. or it's had a particularly good meal the fall the day before and it's wanting to experience it. It gets again. nothing from it. Nothing. Nothing. It just likes. Well, it. how who you say that? <laughs> it gets something from it. <laughs> a gorilla. Eh? Uh, they tried to have human beings living on a gorilla diet. It's just impossible. You can't do. They it. just can't physically eat enough vegetables. <laughs> it's like. Can you desperately try to get into that plastic banana container? <laughs> can't you, your human teeth are too weak. <laughs> gorillas. They had a. They used to uh, when they first kind of discovered gorillas. There was a kind of kind of myth that these gorillas were big sexual beasts, yeah. and they were going to rape white women and take them up into the trees mm-hmm. and like keep them as slaves. These these gorillas. Oh, right, right. Uh, but they took back specimen, but the gorilla has a very small penis. Right. Okay. They're, they're pretty much incapable of it. Oh. Probably pretty much incapable of it. They have no real interest in that kind of stuff. I would, I would imagine. Kinda, 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 Speaking yeah. of sexual needs, mm-hmm. I'm just looking at you there. Do you know all the prostitutes out the back, along the back of this building? That's called, I call it Shite Street. Yes, that's the one. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I was walking down here, uh-huh. and I walked past this car, and they were just finishing their morning business. It says during the day. 10 o'clock in the morning, right? God, that's, that's the girl a- gets out, she's wearing flip-flops, and the reason I noticed she's wearing flip-flops, because she kicks them off to put wellies on. She puts a bright pair of rubber wellies, and then walks away, obviously being paid by that point, with her, her uh, flip-flops now in a Tesco's bag. I have walked past there, and, and there's quite a lot of discarded Johnnies. Yes, all over. And it. I noticed it's the person that does it doesn't even tie a knot in it. No, he just, just throws them, the, lead, just, <laughs> the seagulls go away goes. with them. Yeah. <laughs> there was up in my hometown, there was a play park called The Lies. The Lies. Mm-hmm. And uh, swings, and all that kind of stuff. Kids didn't really use the thing, but anyway... People used to go up there in their cars for snakes. Yeah. And an old lady got really annoyed with all the discarded Johnnies. So she got a Tupperware mm-hmm. box. Right. And she wrote, I think, discarded condoms. She was quite... Mm-hmm. And she nailed it to this tree. Mm-hmm. And her thinking was people would just put the condoms in it. And p- people actually did. Right. But she never thought... Who, she wasn't like empty it, so they just yeah. built up. Oh. And I remember going up there one time and a seagull was eating them. Oh my god. Just eating them like kind of disgusting. Like, like kind of like can we make homemade spaghetti? Yeah. And it's overboiled. Oh my god. You know I went dogging once accidentally. <laughs> I was at my friend's house. She lives in the countryside. Right, okay. And just this lovely dog, this black lab. And I was like and she goes, oh, I'll have to go and take him out. It's a bit rainy though. And oh. I went, oh, don't you worry, I'll take him. Mm-hmm. So we're walking through the forest, you know, with a torch. It's that mm-hmm. sort of countryside, you yeah. know, and I'm having a great time, and I turn the corner, and there's loads of parked cars, didn't the thing? Right. And I, but the way I need to go is right through them. Oh. So I just walk right through, and I look around, and I go, wait a minute. Uh-huh. And it's happening all around me. But I'm actually got a dog. I'm the only one with a dog. I, I'm led to believe people actually take dog leads with them, They're but all no got dog. dog leads. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Yeah. So I turn around, and I run all the way back. Me and we spot. We right. run all the way back. And I said to her, they're dogging up there. Do-. And she goes, of course they're dogging. Did you, did you not know that? Like I was uh-huh. supposed to know. It was just assumed if there's a car park in a, in, a, in a forest, that's what goes on. Before the internet, how did they organise these? I have no was idea. There, was carrier there, pigeon or was something? Was there adverts in the paper? There was must there co- have been. A lot of it must, yeah, yeah, it must have been codes. But how did you get the code? It's just... Conf- it's like People are involved. ingenious. It's, it's but amazing. there's a there's a pal of mine, his brother's a countryside ranger. Mm-hmm. 
And outside Dundee, they'd found a fuckerina. Mm-hmm. So they'd flattened a bit in the middle of this forest and they'd built little huts, like wanking sheds, all uh-huh. facing on. So wow. there must have been some kind of, like, gladiatorial sex Olympics. Oh <laughs> and they're all out in the woods. Part of it must have been quite, you're out in the countryside. There's oh. a bird song. Right. But the, the rutting, like, because it'll it. be middle aged. Well, but here's the problem, though. All the. the it's not going to be Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, is it? No, no. It is anything. If you're a, a swinging meet up, the mm-hmm. best thing you're going to get there is me, to be honest. You're going to be the. I'm going to be the Brad Pitt of that the, situation. The amused bush. <laughs> But if you've got all a these, palate cleanser. If, you, <laughs> if you've got all these sheds facing each other, you are going. Your eye line is going to go to someone else. Yeah, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. That would be awful. It's a, you. You sh- are you shamed by your own sexuality? You, of you, course. Oh, you, it's of course. It's. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, I can't. I grew up with Kenny Everett stuff on the television Cleo Rockus oh dearie there's me. no going back no that's the that's 80s, an incredible I like the 80s I thought were alright but the 90s were terrible they I'm didn't just, do anything yeah. I'm just thinking back in the 90s that was a a shitty period of time wasn't it it was it was horrendous Christ cult oh everything about it Boyzone oh <laughs> Liam Gallagher the whole thing just everything didn't work for me and that everything. was the age where we should have been enjoying that sort yeah, of thing yeah I was but in my prime didn't work. in your yeah. physical prime in the 90s yeah can no wasted. I would say I'm in my physical prime now no no I would. I don't oh, know. I'm speaking I've, for myself no, I've no, got no, a very it's... masculine hernia is it I've, mm. I've had my hernia my belly I woke up and coughed and my belly button sprung out what like a like a like a little switch I, I, came sting- I would say about an inch and a half little meaty nubbin yeah, and I'm like, oh god, that's no good. So I pushed it back in again, a bit painful. Went to the doctor, and he said, yeah, we'll get the operator done. We'll get you to Strathcathro. Right. Okay. And Strathcathro is a hospital built in the site of an old World War Two military right, yeah. base. Old barracks. And there's, yeah, an old barracks. In the barrack huts of the hospital, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a there's a there's a famous say uh, Strathcathro cafe next to it. Mm-hmm. Which says on it, you may gang far and fair war. <laughs> so as you go in there for the day, you go and they, they knocked me out and I woke up and I think, God, I'm feeling quite peachy. Mm. It's almost like I've not been operated on. And the nurse says, we've not operated on you. You're a medical anomaly. Oh, I have no doubt. This says, we could not, we could knock you out, but not fully. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what? They said, yeah, we just couldn't, we couldn't keep you alive. You were get you were gonna die. <laughs> oh dear. And I'm like, oh, that's not very pleasant. Uh, so they sent me to Nine Wells Hospital. Imagine the scene: you're in your gown. Yeah. Your breeks are off. Oh dear. And there's the 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 surgeon, a mm-hmm. lady surgeon. That's fine. Right. Ten student surgeons. They're all there because I'm an, I'm a medical anomaly. They're all there to see the spectacle. It's like something out of Victorian yeah. operating yeah. theatres. Looking at you, I could believe this. Yeah, so they did. Uh, they, managed, they had to get in special equipment. <laughs> they, they said something about extra large tubes. Oh, and they gave me a, a, a I've, I've laminated it. It's my medical thing. I have to show people if they're going to give me an operation. Oh my! I'm all put together. I think uh, it's back to front. Uh, did you get it fixed? The hernia. The hernia is fixed, but I've no longer got a belly button. It's gone. Oh. There's just a flat, like a pigeon, like a pigeon. There's nothing there. That's incredible. And because you know, you get the hairy belly button thing, mm-hmm. the line. Yeah. The, there's just a space there, hairless space. Oh. It's just like somebody's put their thumb in wax. That's like uh, when I split my head open. Oh. And I didn't want to go and get it stitched because no. Red Dwarf was on. Yeah. And I waited too long and it started to all sort of crust and dry. Oh. So I went in and they said, was this longer than eight hours ago? And I went, no. Oh, the skin will have all been And I had to get forceps and oh. pull it. And if you look at me now, that's why my centre pattern's over to one side. That's it. Ruined my hair. Oh. My hernia, I was out cycling. Uh-huh. And I got a phone call. Where, where which part? Was it the scrotum? Was it, it was, the belly button? Um, side, side? Just at the top of the oh, leg, yeah. just the standard yeah, hernia. Yeah, classic. So I, uh, I'm i cycling across mm-hmm. the road bridge, mm-hmm. doing my usual 29 miles a night, yeah. feeling great. That's I a get machine. a text. Right. And it's from, uh, I'm not going to name any names, but our neighbour right here. Uh-huh. So I look at the text and it's a picture of cat vomit. 
Okay. A long line of cat vomit, mm-hmm. and it made me laugh so hard, I felt like I got shot in the groin. Okay. I fell off the bike, and I'm lying there going, what the hell? She, What's happened? She did. That's witchcraft. Yeah. Psychic. That's a psychic attack. I thought attack. I was dying. That's a psychic attack. I had to walk home, oh. limping. Mm-hmm. What is this? Mm-hmm. Go to the doctor. It's a small hernia. Oh. I went, I'm looking at that. There's nothing small about it. Went to the specialist up at our broth, and they went, it's a small hernia. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I was like, it's not small. And that was... Were they getting two years ago, three years ago? Let it lie. They went, just leave it. If it gets worse, then come back. But my belly, it was just my belly button. But they were like, we're operating on that. But that's in the front. That's very different. These things here you can live with. Okay. And the NHS don't do operations on hernias now unless they're changing every month, they're causing pain, a whole thing. A whole gamut of of Uh, reasons they'll do it. That's why I'm currently saving for a private one. I think they were harvesting my organs or something. Maybe the whole... Maybe you had extra... You had extra organs. I think I'm like, I feel a bit (laughs) spleen-like. What does a spleen do? I have no idea. I don't know what a spleen, does it produce a bile? Oh, it could, that sounds familiar. A bile. I'm not an expert. If you've got a question of AstroTurf, I could maybe... Yeah, a bile, is it? I don't like, you know you get the gas. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're breathing in like... Little bits of glass or like mm-hmm. snowflakes. Yeah, it's quite pleasant, feel, isn't it? Yeah. Quite like that. And the last thing you can feel is them lifting your hands. Really? Just lifting your hands. It's like death. Oh. The one I got was an injection. And they said, Right, before mm. I finish putting this in, mm-hmm. before I finish putting it in, you're going to be waking it up. Just, and you'll be fine. Ah. Uh-huh. So I went, Well, that's but. It's like and dream, I woke up. It's dreamless, isn't there was n- it? It's there was death. That's the void. That's the void. It was a death. void. There was no join. There was no sleep. There was nothing. I just closed my eyes and, wo- and woke up. It was all over. It's not weird. So I had not. That's really unsafe. I got my, my yeah. I broke my hands mm-hmm. and I dislocated some fingers, and I went to the hospital emergency in the middle of the night, and uh, the the student it was a student doctor. I was having a look at this. He says, I will get them back in no time. So they give you a little bit of gas. Mm-hmm. And I swear this happened. She went to, there was two of them. There was a nurse and there was this young lassie. And she went to, look at this. And she squeezed her boobs together. Yeah. Then cracked my knuckles back into place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll do things That's like NHS. That. There's That's, such cutbacks. Yeah. You've the, got staff to get to, <laughs> the staff are having to use their breasts. <laughs> Part anaesthetic. We don't have money for anaesthetic. No stitches. All the good doctors have left. Cause Can I have you by the balls? You'll excuse me? <laughs> Injections in. <laughs> my, 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 my grandfather, he worked in a textile mill up north. You can imagine the textile mill, there's a lot of stew, a lot of dust in yeah. it, a lot of mm-hmm. fabric dust. So people used to get a lot of boilings in their necks, zits, plugs, oh, skin. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to, just to clean. Are, big pores yeah. were clogged. And he had a thing in his neck, like a satsuma. Okay. I don't think he knew what a satsuma was because they weren't a partic- they hadn't been getting much fruit in the fifties. But it was sats- I would say satsuma, and they, he went to the this he went to the local doctor, and the doctor says, "God, that's a hell of a thing in your neck." Well, we'll have to see about getting rid of that. Okay, but he says, "Come across to the window here, and we can get a better look at it in the daylight." Right. And my granddad took us across to the window, and he shows his neck to the doctor, and the doctor's having a wee prod it, and he goes, "Hey, look out there! Is that not your wife coming up the street?" And my granddad glanced, and he stabbed a needle in it and burst it. There you go. My granny wasn't in the street. <laughs> Distraction. I th- I'm starting to think well, me and my family may be slightly gullible. <laughs> no. <laughs> we never Easily. <laughs> Just as well I don't play the lottery. Oh, my word. I've never bought a lottery ticket in my life. Really? Never done it. When never I, done it. When I used to go camping, mm-hmm. another camping story mm-hmm. with my friend. Okay. Every week would buy a lottery ticket. Mm-hmm. And he'd buy a porn mag Right To light the fire Oh So he'd glance through it One day I'm glancing I look down There's my friend Julie Oh Do you know what name she went by? Hyacinth Julie <laughs> <laughs> We went on a camp Can't believe it We went camping one time And by the time we'd organised We well, quite young kids mm-hmm. We'd taken a car out and stuff like this And we ended up It was dark before we put the tent up And put the tent up And it's this terrible smell And we're like Oh god Too late to move now So have a beer And make the most of it Following morning we wake up And a foot away from the tent Is a sheep mm-hmm. A dead sheep Oh that smell Bloated yeah. Bloated But it's the smell of the wool The it's lanolin It stinks Disgusting They're, they're yeah. greasy Greasy things sheep You'll smell it for miles I've not been camping in a long time I've been glamping 
Oh, I went a while ago. Because at my terrible. age, glamping, you, you've got a glamp. I need something soft. So it's essentially a bedroom. It's a bedroom in a hut. It's like a shed. Yeah, no. No, not, not your cup me. of tea? No, no, no. You're more of a kind of... You're, yeah, you like to suffer, though. It's suffering to me is is noble. You just wash in a stream and... Yes, I rub like all down, that. Just lie in an ant's nest. Just clean if there's a big it. cow part, I'll, I'll just, just lay my head on lay it. Lay your and head in it. Sleep. Well, next to the glamping experience, there was donkeys and al- alpacas. Yes. Donkeys are a lovely animal, very uh-huh. friendly. Mm-hmm. Alpacas are very standoffish. I didn't like them. No. Didn't come near you. Giving you a funny look. Long necks. <laughs> Anything with horrible. a long neck. It just that long. Didn't like them. Didn't. Like, but they don't. Donkeys. Donkey charities mm-hmm. are the most subscribed charities in the world. Every donkey in the world is a billionaire. Really. Donkeys are cute. Okay. That is in their favour. Then there's a religious element. I think oh, Jesus had a thing yeah. with donkeys. So they just they just get funneled into them all this money. Donkeys. Right. Mm-hmm. It was like the donkey. Th- this was the weird thing I heard in the Bible. I may have got this wrong, mm-hmm. but the donkey got a cross on its back because Jesus was there, so it got his tool of execution on his back. Oh gosh! For carrying him. That's weird. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Is the robin red breast has got the the red chest because it it knelt in Christ's blood? Really? I believe that's the way they oh, think about it. That's a strange one. People weren't eating enough. They weren't. There was that stuff they used they to probably have had a week's fast. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Did you set up a religion at that time? You know what? I've often thought about setting up a religion. I don't think it would be oh, that difficult. No. You could just say anything. You'd have to be, you need a charismatic leader. That's me. I can imagine you in a robe, like white robes. Yeah. It would be a sex cult, though, it would very be. quickly. It yeah, would, I couldn't would... be involved. I have trouble at the best no, of times. No, no. You'd, you'd, you'd kind of have a kind of charge hand attitude to the sex. Yeah, it would be more instructional. Extra- yeah. I yeah. would do sketches. Uh, excuse me, you're doing that slightly wrong. Yeah. A little bit more thrusting. <laughs> Let's go. You'd probably clean up afterwards. Oh, yeah, we Vileda, Vileda super I feel it'd be quite submissive in that situation. You'd have your wee brown janitor's jacket on, and you'd just <laughs> come fast. <laughs> the wee, you know those wee blue things you pull onto your shoes? Oh, yeah. You'd need them. I'd need them. They'd definitely be sloshing. Cleaning up an, after an orgy, for Christ's sake. Can and here's imagine? the thing, when you see these sex clubs, there's one in here in Dundee, isn't there? There's there's a, no I think that's gone to ground. Is that gone? Yeah, already. It had an expose in the local press. Oh, dear. <laughs> How, what would you expose about it? I don't know. What would people be surprised think, about? Are they wanting them just to be shagging in like the street? Yes, yeah. it's disgusting. I'd hate it. to think what goes on in Dundee. You see That's some people on. going about. There's a, there's a. Is it not? What's the guys that have the sex with the computers? What? They they have attachments on their computers. Oh right, okay, no, I couldn't do that. But I think that the 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 code amongst themselves is a is it not a, a nut the way around their necks? Like is a, it a hex? Oh nut. right, I okay. think so. We'll have to take I was off I was NASDA buying some Murray Cup, and uh, I saw a couple that had those hex nuts, and they saw that I saw. Oh, so they came one like, of those moments. Oh, yeah, 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 eyebrows yeah, yeah. and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just not that I'd really want to go to a sex club, but I just get the feeling you'd go and you'd, you'd see your uncle there or you'd something. Be, yeah, you'd, you'd go, just oh, know in my life she works in W H Smith. I'm like, oh god, that's the woman for the chip shop. Yeah, I couldn't you'd go. You'd be like, God's sake. Okay. And I hate that to say alone this, would put you off. But there's a lot of things online at the moment in magazines where people say, "Fellas, it's." Legging season, yeah, we know we're in Dundee. It's not a good season. The legging season, oh, they're stretched to the point of see through, and these giant bum cheeks look like oh, they're chewing on it. Oh, it looks like they're made of bin bags. It's uh, awful. Pe- people do not the slightest bit of sunshine in Scotland. The yeah. sun comes from beneath a cloud, and people just emerge, like yeah, unsheathed, just um, with their their pasty. I've never wet worn. Paper I've skin. never worn shorts since I was at school. No, I just don't. Eat, I don't even own a pair of shorts. I do own them, but the unfortunate things that, due to the width of my legs, it looks like you got quite slim legs. They're holding trainers up by the laces. So that's what it looks oh, like with me. Well, as I've got older, the, my leg here is just molting. Yeah, the front of my legs, it's a soft, soft hair, and right. the front of my legs, it's just rubbed all the hair off. Oh, so like it's the shin is just. It's like alabaster. Oh, that sounds don't, awful. I don't want the like world a whalebone that's washed up. It's like up. a whalebone. It's like a, you know, one of those, uh, what are they called? The things you feed the budgerigars. 
Oh, um, uh, the, cuttlefish, the cuttlefish bones. Yeah. My shins are like cuttlefish bones, and they're probably as tough as well. Oh, but <laughs> you know, see, as you get older, certain bits of skin do thicken. Mm-hmm. I sit in a particular way, so one of my shins has got a little bit of callus on it. Right, I'm going to stop you right here, and I'm going to show you something. Oh now, my god! No one, no one. I don't know where it's come from. You get here a thump as he unleashes right. it onto the table. Oh, that's a that's a callus. I've got a shin callus. That's a subservient callus. You're down on your knees. I have no idea where it comes where from. Where does that come from? We've been looking around. Did I lean on something? You must. That I, you I, must. I can't figure it out. I've got a shin callus. What? It's that? strange. Not on that leg. Yeah. I don't know. I don't understand it. It's is it an age thing? It's because I'm getting. But you must. That something aged. must be rubbing. Something. I can't figure it out. Because a callus needs. It needs something. Needs something. Look are you sandpaper? Are you just sandpapering a just, little bit in your sleep? I don't know. I do have a lot of sandpaper in my pockets. You're just sandpapering and I, sandpaper. I don't know where it comes from. It really disturbs me. We've both been trying to catch me out doing yeah, something. Yeah, you're doing something. But we can't figure there was, it out. I used to share a flat with a guy that had flat feet. So right. his, the soles of his feet were just a thick callus. Oh. And he used to take a thing for peeling tatties and just whittle at it. Oh He'd my. whittle. And it would come away in like chunks like mm-hmm. you could you could light a barbecue with these bits of skin right you know do you this is a common thing amongst scottish people everyone got burnt really badly mm-hmm. when they were children there'd right. be one okay. sporadic warm summer and everybody would just get baked yes and then you would yeah. peel the skin off your shoulders oh yeah everyone's done that everyone's got that kind of freckly shoulder the freckly yeah. freckly shoulder but as i've got older my back's become very hairy Yes. Never used to be. I've lost the hair on my head, yeah. but I haven't it's, it's lost really it. Appears. Just, yeah. Mine, great. I've bought a German nose trimmer because mm-hmm. my, my the nose hair was just getting out of control. Yeah. It was like a thicket. Right. And my ear hair. Jesus. Yeah, I've Christ. got that now as well. But it's it was horrendous. blonde, but now it's starting to get a bit darker. Right. There was an old geezer, my mum used to cut his hair, and he had, he had thick hair growing on his eyelids. You get hair everywhere. Jesus. It's really Is strange. That it? Is that I've what got a is? single. They're almost like antenna that come out of my shoulder. Right. Have you seen the latest sort of Spider Man like and his like legs come out? Yeah, exactly the same. Jeez. And my eyebrow hair gets really long. And yes. it's a different kind it's a different it's kind a different of hair. hair. I don't think it's it's human hair. No. It's like do you remember did you ever go to St Andrew's uh, new picture house? And they still until oh. very recently had horse hair seats. And if you Is sat that the down, one? It was like a knitting needle going in your arse. I went to see Lord of the Rings there, and I'm sure it was just a, a TV for the house. Yes, they have two small cinemas at the oh. front. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're essentially watching a TV. You watch the it's TV. Tiny. They said, "I sold out." So we bought tickets. No, 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 no. I says, "There's no tickets. You buy them on the door." And they'd bought tickets that matched the cinemas tickets because it was the old style paper ones. Right, right. Them. They had a big roll. So we get into a bit of a scrap, you know. Uh-huh. I was a young man, so I start swinging. So I guess into a whole fight, and then we managed to get in. So we talked to the manager who we knew and says they had tickets. So they, they actually counted up what they made and they said, we'd only made half the money of the people that were in. They were all bringing in their own tickets. Oh. So the next week, they had a bouncer on the door. He was a four foot five guy with a massive hump on his back, but he was vicious. Vicious. He'd take on anyone. Nothing to lose. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, there's ABC in the town, eh? That was the sticky carpets. Yes. But that was a good cinema. I loved that. In yeah. That was a big cinema. Never, cl- in, never yeah. cleaned it. Never no. cleaned. Sticky in. I used to bunk off school and go in there. Oh. And the woman, one day, she had long, dark, curly hair. And she and I'd go in every day, bunk off school. I was off for six, seven months at a time. She goes, do you not like school, son? I went, no, I don't. And she goes, well, just give me a pound. You just go to the back. So I'd go in. I'd be <laughs> sitting there watching uh, Top Gun for the 15th time. Okay. And she'd come up with her ice cream thing. And she goes, do you want anything, son? And I was like, nah, you're okay. She went, okay, bye. And it just, this would happen every time. Because oh, <laughs> she had to go out with her ice cream tray. Oh, no. Are you were the only person. I was the only one there. She shouted. Many years ago, I went I like a year's unlimited cinema ticket. Uh-huh. So I'm going, it's, it was the worst year for cinema. There was nothing I wanted to watch. Right. And I went to see Dog Soldiers. This is the middle of the day. Go in, it's the dream. There's nobody there. Right. Nobody's in the cinema. So I sit middle, middle, perfect. 
Okay. The cinema film's about to start. My this is because if I was a billionaire, I'd build my own cinema. Right. Okay. We one seat, just one seat. Uh huh. Friends and that could sit in scatter cushions, but I would have the big seat. I, suddenly the door opens and a guy comes in. Okay. He walks up the aisle uh-huh. and sits in the seat right in front of me. Right. The whole cinema I choose from, he sits right in front of me. And I'm leaning forward and I goes, mate, what the fucking hell are you doing? He's like, I can sit wherever I want. I says, Christ, you've got the whole place. You're killing my vibe. This is awful. He's like, I'm not going anywhere. So I put my feet up, my big tacky boots either yeah. side of his head yeah. and start clattering them together. He gets up and leaves. That's insane. Imagine doing that. Yeah. I love a cinema. But I've not been for a while because people eat too much. Crunchy yeah, okay. food. Oh. Crunchy food. And millennials are just on their phones. They like telling people they're in the cinema. Do you know Jeff? Yeah. I, well, I used to go to the cinema with him all the time because uh-huh. his sister ran it and we got okay, free tickets. Okay. He took a sandwich. I once took a whole cooked chicken. <laughs> Oh, and it came like whole cooked chicken, <laughs> yeah. this man in the noise, yeah. and I just discarded the bones under the seat. Oh, mm. you're all class. You can tell uh, you're greasy. a rural, the secret a rural is, guy. I've always got a, a little bag of moist wipes in my back pocket. Oh, that's for uh, a messy shit. A messy, that's that's messy for. shit. There was a while they tried to promote the the moist wipe as a, an alternative to toilet. Yeah, roll. they can't do that now. It's just crazy. Yeah. Have you seen a fat berg? I've seen one, not personally, but. <laughs> I saw a clip and I couldn't watch it. They have, to, they have to cut it into chunks mm-hmm. via high pressure hoses. It's horrendous. That's going to bring. I've always, the next World War is going to be fought over wheelie bins. <laughs> I have no doubt. Because wheelie bins, it's just like, it's it's getting wild out there. Yeah. It's getting, there's different colour codes. People are now having to pay. People get frustrated. Mm-hmm. Vehicles get damaged. Yeah. Things are going to kick off. Mm-hmm. Things are going to kick off. I reckon within the next three or four months. It's it's terrible. I've now got to pay uh, for the purple and brown ones. And What's the purple one? The purple one is glass. Oh yeah, I don't have a purple. I've got. The, I don't have the purple or the blue. Mm-hmm. We've got the blue, but the blue's now down to one a um, one month. I take the blue. Once the a month paper goes to the bin. It's, we take that down the bin. Yeah, the brown one's thirty five. But I don't. But I don't have to pay that. But what on earth are you going to do with it? That's it. We're going My to neighbours pay. are quite elderly. I'll just start sticking it all in there. And have them. <laughs> the thing is, uh, we've got our own ones, uh, and there's communal ones at the end of the road for the other. The block, giant ones, yeah, just right? use that. It's it's got settees in it. People uh, come down yeah. in vans and just dump stuff all the, the time. Big tellies. Yeah, there's a lot People, of big tellies. There's holdouts that still have the big tellies. Yeah. Getting the ones with the huge backs on them. I know someone very close to us right now. It's got a big telly. Not only a big telly, but I know someone else. Who gave her a thir- a thirty two inch no a thirty seven inch uh-huh. HD flat screen the whole flat thing screen. several years ago and it's still sitting there not turned on yet because she's oh. she's sticking to this old telly that oh, that's just a pain the new tellys are just wafer thin yes you put them up in the wall mm-hmm. they're fantastic that's great Get I don't like leaving them on at night though. No, I unplug them at the wall. I unplug every. That's that. See, you're a man of a certain age, uh, but you will patrol the house looking for uh, that little plug that shouldn't be on. I always think the toasters get to come to life in the middle of the night and burn yes, down the house. I'm I've convinced. always. The, I think the most dangerous thing in the house, which that's why we don't have one. No, it's not the deep fat fryer. It's the tumble dryer. Yes, it's all the lint. Yes, I watch it. I've got. They, um, they can I'm catch fire. It, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. very aware of the lint. It gets changed all the time. And I clear Do it. Do you? And, yeah. Oh, oh, I really, yes. We bought, we had a, when microwave technology first came into the household, we had a microwave oven. It looked like it had come off the Kursk, a nuclear submarine. It was a big uh-huh. steel thing. And they, we'd had it for a wee one and gave it to our granny. But it worked when the door was open. Right. That's very strange. So the door was open and this turn t- thing was turning that's, and a, they, that's death for children isn't it yeah but what has started to happen a hole started to appear on the side of the microwave like a molten hole it was it was consuming itself right the fuck yeah that's mm. I'm terrified of all electricity it should be banned if steam. you can't if you can't see it I like steam because you can see steam yeah but electricity that, that's a silent killer have you ever been electrocuted badly just five times. Yeah, five times, yeah. It's something else, isn't it? Twice at work. It's all consuming. The biggest punch I ever gave myself in my life was being electrocuted at work. Uh-huh. 
because everyone thought my head exploded. I just punched myself in the nose and Did burst you? it. Yeah, <sighs> touched the uh, plug on the wall. Water had burst on the inside. Uh huh. Been running down, and I just touched it in the morning. Boom. Oof. Punched myself in the face, lying on my back. But everyone saw me getting thrown th- through the air, but I wasn't. I punched uh-huh. myself and almost knocked myself out. <laughs> I, I was ironing a pair of pants. Okay. And the cable on the iron had been frayed. And okay. I grabbed a hold of it and just got this electric shock. It was oh, it's a, a t- I terrible once, feeling. I once almost killed myself with a blow heater in the 1980s. Right. You know, remember a yo-yo biscuit? Chocolate yes, biscuit? Yes, of course. Fantastic. I always used to take the, the tin foil off and right. make a little spear, a dart, and I'd throw it. Uh-huh. And I was a little kid. But the, it was one of these old 1970s blow heaters that had the plastic coal. Right, okay, yeah. And I had the little thing, the little windmill that created the illusion of yeah. flame. But I had a grill in the front, the heat came out, and I stuck the little yo-yo wrapper in there, and I came to, I swear to God, it was the other side of the room. Yeah. Yeah. Make you jump. I think it's magic. I do it. I just, could, how do it how does a TV work? <laughs> like it. How's a TV work? Are the people in the TV? See, this is the thing. How's radio work? This is the how thing. does a car engine work? Everyone I have thinks no they're idea. smart. Everyone thinks Nobody's they're smart. smart. Nobody's so, smart. So where are the smart people? You give me a hammer. Where are they? You give me a hammer and a nail and yeah. put me in the forest for a million yeah. years. I'm not walking out of there with an iPhone. So where, who's doing it? I don't know. I don't think it's human beings at all. Nobody's fully, Johnny Ball used to be on. Uh-huh. I think we spoke about Johnny Ball, but he doesn't believe in any form of global warming, I don't think. Which is a, a quite now, a concern. I don't think Johnny Ball could build a television. No. That Adam Savage guy, he seems mm-hmm. quite a smart guy, couldn't build a television. So who's doing it? It's very, st- I've often thought of this. So have I. Because we all think we're smart, but I'm, I'm Are we all sure part of a super organism? Is each of our brains part of a greater thing? I think we And are. that's where the brain is, yeah. And combined, yeah. the brain does it. That's why I'm worried about the internet. Yeah. It's going to start making decisions for us. Well, AI will. Mm-hmm. First people go accountants. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's not the manual worker. Mm-hmm. They're going to need somebody to pick tatties. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the accountant. Just maths. That's true. Because it's just a calculator. An algorithm. Algorithms. That's, yeah. the, that's the cool Social part, media. It's also scary. Social media send me some adverts, and I'm, I've not even been looking at it. But I contacted social media. Because mm-hmm. it's one thing, isn't it? Just yes, social it's just media. one. Just talk and to social media. And they said it's because of my demographic, my age group. There's all the things like hair. Yeah. It's insulting, though. Meat matures in your area. I get a lot of that. Yeah. It is just... Young girls looking for... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're assuming I have money. That's yeah. a mistake. That's Their a, algorithms that's a terrible are perfect. Mistake. <laughs> I once got a phone call in the middle of the day from a call centre about my mobile phone. Right. And I convinced them that I was spending £2,000 a month because I was a drug dealer and pimp. Uh-huh. And then on this, on the, for the course of the call, I pretended to be in a house invasion and I was being tortured. Oh. And periodically, I would okay. go back to the phone, and the gentleman was like, oh Mr. Gordon, are you okay? He was on the phone for two hours. <laughs> I'm screaming, make myself a cup of tea, claiming my scrotum was being cut open with a razor blade. You vinegar, splashed with vinegar. You have too much time on your hands. I could take stuff, I can take stuff, I can... Oh, dear God. Do you know that I go about with a tiny fork? Have I told you this? No. I have a small doll's house fork. Why? And it's in my it's in my man bag. And when I see a large dog shit, <laughs> I put the fork down next to it and pretend it's a huge dog shit. And then I post it on social media. <laughs> and I've been doing that for some time. <laughs> and people are perplexed. On that note. Uh, join us again next time on Folk in Scotland for more intellectual discourse with me, Derek Vindas, and Goran Vor, with the sexiest voice in podcasting. Brown sugar, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs>